Hello my friends, welcome back to Tittle Tattle Tarot, it's Georgie. Now today's um, reading is going to be a real first for me, an absolute first. Um, the lovely Paula over at Mad World Tarot, she quite often does um, the 12 houses um, of the Zodiac and she will do a spread for the, for the 12 houses and she does them straight off the top of her head, she knows which houses which and where to place the cards um i don't so i've made myself um a wheel of the 12 houses so that i can you know place the cards around it and know where i'm going so but what i am going to do rather than use tarot cards i'm going to use the little cards that i've created so um they've got my energy all over them and i am going to read about harry and megan jointly so regardless of whether they're actually living together, whether their marriage has, to all intents and purposes, ended. Whatever their situation is, until they actually divorce, until they legally separate, their energies are together, no matter where they are. You know, they are a pair. So I'm going to try and do it jointly for them both with 12 houses. I've never done this before. I made this last night. Um, don't worry if you can't see it too well. It's more for my benefit than yours, to be honest with you. But um, we're going to see how it goes. Um, what I'm going to do first of all, I've got these, as I call them, energy cards. They're just things, 33 cards that I've made that I think cover most of life's situations. So we've got that. And then I have um, my own greater arcana, just the, the greater arcana that, again, um, I've drawn. Um, so what I'm going to do is shuffle these 22 greater arcana and I'm just going to pick one energy for the next 12 months. OK, for the next 12 months. One energy that covers, oh, sorry, one greater arcana that, that covers the general feeling for this couple over the next 12 months, whatever comes up. We'll just use that as the central energy and that will probably cover uh color everything on the table so let's have a little go and see what happens so this is all very experimental if you're very very old and wise with the tarot please forgive me this is my time to learn and so you know be kind <laughs> i'm experimenting i'm experimenting and having fun and i hope you enjoy it and it is all for entertainment. You watch me learn and um, hopefully you get something out of it. I get experience and we will have a little laugh as well along the way, hopefully. All right, so I'm just going to cut to the middle. What is the heart of the situation with this couple? What will be their overriding influence over the next 12 months? Empress in reverse. Well, there she is. There she is. Um, I think... Judging on this, the main thing that's going to be coming up are the children. Well, let me just pull this little empress in reverse up to you so you can see a little bit clearer. So this is my design for the empress, and she's in reverse. So the empress, the right way up, is obviously, you know, the mother, the, the wonderful mother. She's all four queens. Um, she's just Mother Earth. You would go to her with any problem and she would help you sort it out. She's fertile. She's a glorious creature. We have the Empress in reverse. So literally everything that I've just said, reverse it. Uh, this is not a mother. This is um, a woman who's barren. It's a woman who um, doesn't have love in her heart, um, has the opposite in her heart. So this is the overriding influence. So I would say that... Um, the children are going to be a very large uh, part of this next year, um, uncovering truths, uncovering fantasies. OK, so we just pop her back there. All right. So now from now on, I'm going to use my own um, little cards that I've made. And we just get an energy read for the 12 houses. And as I said, I've never done this before. Everything's all very handmade. And um, as I say, it's got my energy all over it. And my hope is that because, you know, I, I've sort of made this myself, that um, it's going to help me really connect. And uh, we'll see what happens. 
Okay, so I need to look at my little grid here so I know where I'm going. Lovely Paula, she just knows immediately. <laughs> Maybe one day I will, but at the moment I don't. So I'm just going to shuffle. And when I feel it's right, we are going for Aries, the first house. So we're reading on them both jointly because until they do actually properly separate and divorce, you know, their energies are tied. So let's see. Put them jointly. We've got Aries, the first house. I'm going to stop there. Aries, first house, the self. Um, so it's uh, the core of the personality. Um, what's going on? Change, renewal. You know, what, what's going on in this first house, the self? Pride. Right, how well does that describe, um, you know, their self-concept, their core personality, pride? I don't, do I need to say anything else, you know, and they always say pride comes before a fall. So we very clearly have the first house here. That's going to colour everything because, you know, if, if, your, if your self-belief and your core personality is that pride, this is, you know, the people that never say sorry. And isn't that the truth? Neither of them can admit when they were wrong. Too much pride. Look how this boastful person, <laughs> look at the awards that they've um, paid for. Slight blush, but only a very slight blush about it. All these big awards for nothing. Pride. Okay, so we're going to the second house. The second house is possessions. So let's have a look. This is Taurus, the second house. So I need to read these things. So, OK, it's the possessions like the house, the financial things, um, material concerns, um, even things like security. So anything to do financially with their house, home, security. All those kind of um, money things. Let's just have a little look. The house the security, their home, financial matters, and we're in Taurus, second house. I'm reading these to me, reciprocity reversed. So, you know, possessions, financial matters, take, take, take. Yeah, reciprocity in reverse, the give and take, but it's in reverse. So, you know, I, I see this as the taking maybe of financial matters. How about the, the um, so-called charity that they're involved with, the Archie Well, which isn't a charity, remember, it's a business. Um, I think it's something ridiculous, like 95% or perhaps even more um, goes to them and only that small, tiny percentage needs to go to any charity. Um, it, they've got their fingers in the pies, you know, and uh, this is going to overcolor their whole financial situation. So <laughs> I think that kind of says it all, doesn't it? Very bad financial situation when you're taking, 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 whatever it is. Okay, so we've got Gemini is the third house. This is relationships, family, friends. Okay, so what family? And to be honest with you, friends are getting very low on the ground, aren't they? So Gemini, this is the third house. And this is relationships, family and friends. Relationships with others. Let's just have a look at their relationships. Shadow self. Hmm. Um, I think, you know, with these two, they have um, that very dark underside to them. And I think, well, obviously their family know about that, but sort of more relating to their friendships with people, their and business partners, you know, but people who are friendly in business. Look at, you know, the, um, the things that are coming up about Elton John, um, things that he discovered, things that were said about him um, after he'd been kind to them. You know, he's realised their shadow self. He's realised what they're about. And more and more people are coming out, you know, um, and, and they're realising that there is this very dark shadow of them. You know, um, they will be all wonderful to your face. 
but then what is actually said behind your back is a totally different thing. I felt I, I'm not a lover of Elton John at all, but I felt very sorry for him that um, allegedly he'd lent them his jet, he'd given them, you know, use of um, his homes, you know, um, abroad. And, you know, he, they were caught uh, being cruel. And that is really the shadow self, isn't it? That part of you that, you know, you try and hide from people. Um, but it's been seen. And that's going to colour their relationships with, I would say, more with their friends than their families. Because their families know. Their families know what they're all about. So I'm going to leave that there on the wheel. Okay. And then we have cancer in the fourth house. Um, this is uh, the the private world. Um, I have this written here as um, the relationships with um, older people, with ageing. So, I mean, you could be looking at Thomas Markle. Um, you could be looking at our King Charles. You know, it's, it's the relationships um, regarding those private, well, what should be private relationships, um, and uh, it kind of does focus on older people, people who are older than them. So let's just see. Let's just see. The people who are older than them. The private world, you know, what's going on. Anything to do with ageing. So we've got striving to be better, but it's in reverse. So striving to be, be better, you know, you'd be taking on projects and trying to, um, you know, um, open up your horizon, striving to be better. You you, you want to improve your life and uh, your standing. They fail to see. They fail to see the need to strive to be better. Um, they think everybody else should be striving to be better, but not them. A total lack of um, self-understanding, you know, um, striving to be better. Well, you all need to be better. You need to apologise to us. We're perfectly fine, thank you. It's, it's not, in reverse, it's not us that need to strive to be better. Point the finger. You need to strive to be better. Thomas Markle, um, our king. Uh, Queen Camilla, you know, um, the, the older people, but very, very much sort of um, still family based cancer, fourth house, you know, but but looking at relationships and issues around aging, it doesn't matter to them at all. It doesn't matter that somebody is getting older and frailer. Um, it's you need to be better. You need to apologize. You need to la di da di da. So interesting. So now we're coming on to Leo. And Leo is the fifth house. And this is love, emotions, and passion. Okay. Uh, your relationship, oh, your relationship and your children's uh, relationship with you, your relationship with your children. So Leo, fifth house, love, emotions, um, the house of children and your relationships. Okay, so very much close to home, them and their children. Them and their children, let's call it that. Leo fifth house, which she is a Leo, isn't she? So the fifth house, love, passions, the house of children, your relationships with them. Let's just go from there. Exposure. Oh my goodness. I hope you like that one with the boobies. I hope I don't get closed down for that. <laughs> Who could close me down for that? That's so ridiculous. <laughs> Exposure. Well, there you go. And it all comes back to this one in the middle, doesn't it? Exposure. Um, coming to light. The, the love's not there. The passion's not there. Uh, the children, well, if they are there, where did they come from? Did they come from this belly? Well, we'll see, won't we? Because all of this is going to become apparent. What a horrible reading so far. I have 33 cards here. And I have some very positive cards in here, believe it or not. But... um. They're not coming out at the moment. So let's have a look at the next house. Whoops. So yes, uh, being exposed, being exposed. And we said that this is love, emotions, passions, the house of children and um, all that good stuff being exposed. Wow. OK, so Virgo. Virgo is the sixth house. This is health, uh, physical matters. So 
uh, that's very interesting. That's, that This was very much a Megan um, house, wasn't it? Uh, being the Leo. And now being the Virgo house, the sixth house, this is um, the health and physical physical house so I'm wondering now this is this is more of a Harry house so I wonder whether it will show us anything more towards Harry because this is very much her isn't it this is very much her so let's see if these little cards I've made can tell me anything about Harry health Harry and health um in that sixth house Harry and health in the sixth house let's see what my little cards say for this one life's burdens and look how this figure is just bowed over bent double um all of these burdens and there are many of them and they're very heavy weighing down on the shoulders so you know this is your health is suffering your mental health your physical health work you know um i don't know how long you could carry on lifting those boulders without something snapping whether it's physically or more likely emotionally so um for the health i would not say if i got that as a health card for myself um i would not be very happy with that i'd be very worried and i'd be looking at a change of lifestyle i'd be looking to change my ways definitely and wouldn't you you know you'd be thinking oh my goodness i am due for something terrible happening here if i carry on the way i am so on we go libra we've got the seventh house so um this is regarding more sort of justice and the legal matters libra um it is relationships um it could be marriage as well in that but um i'm looking at this more as uh justice legal matters so, i mean that could even be things like uh business legal it could be um in a divorce court, uh, that kind of legal, um, we'll just see. But anything to do with, um, you know, the legal side of things, justice. Let's see what we've got here. Heartbreak. Oh, dear Lordy Lou. Okay, so heartbreak. I mean, do I need to clarify that anymore? Um, this is says here: close relationships, partnerships marriage business matters all regarding to legal and justice matters so heartbreak um we're reading on two energies but um i could see the person with the heartbreak is going to be the person with the life burdens here um this is very much relating to harry um unless something happens with her legally that causes her heartbreak so that is always a situation you know things being uncovered someone um, taking her to court um, you know both things could happen couldn't they she could be taken to court and cause her heartbreak um, it could be the marriage it could be all kinds of things but this is not good this is not good again you know it's the kind of energy that you don't want to see um, you don't want to see this so Scorpio Scorpio is the eighth house it's endings and beginnings um, it could be inheritances um anything uh to do with taxes and debts maybe so endings and new beginnings remember you know the death card scorpio uh, it's not just an end it's a new beginning so what have we got here have we got an end have we got a new beginning you know to have an ending and have a new beginning can be very exciting it's like the phoenix rising isn't it but let's see we're on the eighth house scorpio endings and new beginnings I'm going to stop. Whoop, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> Gluttonous. It's a strange card to get, but um, I just see that it's not an ending and it's not a new beginning. Um, it's just give me more, isn't it? Give me more. If you were, if you were overeating and overindulging, supposing you were having trouble with alcohol, and you just kept saying, "Oh, I'll stop tomorrow. I'll change tomorrow. Oh, I'll worry about it tomorrow." you're not getting an ending and a new beginning are you you're on that same old hamster wheel uh gluttonous give me more i want i want remember this reciprocity where was it reciprocity card here give and take 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 glutton 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 give me give me give me i want i'm gonna have 
I mean, this could be the, the figure with the bottle. And you've got the ice cream there as well. But, you know, there's no there's no um, changing of your ways. If you've got that gluttonous way about you, um, you need to make a very definite choice that you're going to leave this way of life behind. Whether you're drinking too much, whether you're um, taking, taking from people, whether you're eating too much, too much of anything. It has to be a very physical, you have to say, no, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm changing my life. And that will be Scorpio. That will be starting again. But endings and new beginnings, no. They, they are staying doing what they're doing. Nothing changes. And, you know, we know if nothing changes, nothing changes, does it? Um, okay, so let's just carry on. We have got Sagittarius in the ninth house. This is uh, your philosophy on life. So maybe all that meditation that Harry does, all that tapping, maybe that's going to have a little bit of a knock-on effect. All that yoga she does with her leg in the air, maybe that sort of thing. Um, this is all the philosophy, the the travel. Maybe you go out to India and, you know, find yourself um, new fields explored, new horizons. So their philosophy on life. What's happening? Maybe, maybe they'll just um, open up some kind of centre for well-being. What do you reckon? Sagittarius, the ninth house. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Learn the lessons from life. So, learn the lessons from life. And we're talking about philosophy, travel, new ideas, religion. And there's your, I think, you know, this is from the universe, isn't it? This is very sort of um, the kind of energy that comes from, from source, sort of telling you, you know, look at look at philosophy look at broadening your horizons look look at different religions look at how you can be better and this is again is source to me saying learn from the lessons learn to be better change your life learn but we've got this sandwich with the gluttonous card will they actually do that that's what that's to me is what source is saying you need to learn some lessons here we've gone all the way around the wheel we're at the ninth house you know we've only got a few more houses left you still you are still doing the same thing learn from the lessons you are being taught in all these different houses so let's see what sandwiches it on the other side we've got gluttonous here maybe they do learn what have we got here outward persona social media career um, all that kind of thing, um, all the, the messages that go out. Um, this is kind of the um, eight of wands energy, you know, those those eight wands traveling really fast, that communication, the outward, um, the outward message, the career, all that kind of thing, a very eight of wands kind of energy, this one. So we've got uh, Capricorn 10th house, we're getting there and... Um, it all just looks a bit like Groundhog Day to me this next year. Let's have a look. Capricorn, 10th house, outward, outward messages, the mirror. So I think with this, if you heard the, the um, saying about people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, and it's about really looking at yourself, you know, question yourself before you start criticising other people. Take a good look. Uh, these people don't seem to be very able to really look at themselves. They need to learn the lesson from life. You know, these two are real, almost warning cards, I feel. You know, if you don't learn the lessons and you don't look at yourself and what you're doing, we've got two more houses here. What will happen? What will happen? This is just like a little gateway here, isn't it? Of all this negativity universe is sort of saying come on learn and look look at yourself it's no good keep pointing the finger at other people and saying they did this they did that you've got to take some responsibility so let's just have a look let's just get shuffling again so let's go into Aquarius that's the 11th house this is their uh, their social activities, their friends and organisations. Um, 
sort of their principles, their ideals and morals, but it's all around um, social activities, their friendships. You know, well, they sound like they've done it with Elton John, and I think a lot of people are really backing away from them. But let's see, maybe things turn around. By the time we get to the 11th house, um, maybe they've um, scrabbled together and things are, you know, coming right again. Let's have a look. Aquarius, the 11th house, their, their social activities, their friendships and organisations. Again, look, it's another one of those cars weighing up the situation. They've got to, they've got to look at things. So we've got three warnings here. We've got three warnings. Look at what you're doing. Learn the lesson. Look at yourself before you look at other people. Weigh up a situation instead of just rushing in. This is it with them. They rush and they rush. They do it without thinking. Both of them, both of them act so compulsively. So we've got a little cluster here. Warning. So I'm going to go to this final house and see what the final house says. Now this is the conflicts, the sorrows, the difficulties. Okay, Pisces, 12th house. Um, it's sort of an insight into um, into a deeper happiness. You know, you, you've got to look at these conflicts, these sorrows and difficulties, um, all your limitations, and you've got to look at them, you've got to, got to address them, and then hopefully it leads to a deeper happiness with it. Let's see what the Pisces 12th house is, the conflicts, sorrows and difficulties and the limitations. vision of the future you know it's in reverse um you know i would say that if this was the right way up the vision of the future they've taken heed here because they've got like a nice little window here just sort of saying to them please learn your lesson look at yourself weigh up the situation do these things and things will improve for you if only you do these vision of the future then they say yes you know by the end of the year they they consider this and then they can move on but in the pisces house we've got vision of the future in reverse um well if your vision of the future is in reverse to me you're looking backwards you're not you're not looking forward and doesn't that sum them up rather than having your eyes on the prize your eyes going forward how you're going to best improve your lives you're constantly vision of the future in reverse, looking backwards, looking backwards. Um, so 12 months on, we're back to that same situation, looking backwards. Now, um, I don't know. I don't know whether we're getting a divorce here or what we're getting. Um, we've got the relationship house here with Libra, which had the heartbreak card in it. Um, so, mm, to me, something big is going to happen here. Um, but I think it's more around the Empress in reverse sort of coloured the whole of this. And then, funnily enough, we had this exposure card. Look at that. How shocked is she? <laughs> I hope you like that. <laughs> how does Megan? <laughs> it hasn't quite got her hair, but there we go. Um, how shocked is she at this? Here, love, emotion, passion, the house of children. I mean, for goodness sake, you couldn't be clearer than that, could you? Everything being exposed. So, my dears, I hope you enjoyed that. Please forgive me. Um, I, I've never done this before. Um, if I was wrong in any of these houses or, you know, um, I was not clear, uh, forgive me on that. The, the wheel was more for my benefit than yours. So if you couldn't see it, um, I'm sorry, but um, I needed to have it there. So that is my energy read using my cards for the next, um, for the 12 houses of the upcoming year for jointly Megan and Harry. Um, I had great fun doing that and um, I certainly learnt a little bit from it and I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye bye.